This is the Oracle Analytics OAC homepage. At the top, there's a full natural language search. Across the middle, there's personalized watch lists currently showing system monitoring metrics. Below that, there's the core content of dashboards and reports, etc. Let's start by loading some data from scratch. Gartner sent us the World Economic Forum data, which I'm going to load into the system. You'll notice that when I load the data, OAC automatically does some deep profiling. I'll get back to that in a second. First, I want to bring in some additional data to make this analysis a little bit more robust. I could bring in data from my existing data warehouse, or if I need to, connect to any one of these data sources. I'm going to bring in a flat file of health data and some information that we found from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. OAC has created the data model behind the scenes and it's identified the joins, and I can fine tune those if I need to. Now, let's look at the automated data profiling. I can see that there's a quality issue here with my currency. I can double click on this red bar and replace the nulls. This will help make my analysis more meaningful. Additionally, it's giving me a sense for how the data values are distributed via these histograms. As the person is going to be analyzing the data, just knowing this information is already helpful. Using the data values, not just the metadata, OAC makes some smart recommendations for enrichments. Let's focus on countries specifically. When analyzing poverty, knowing the demographics of a country like the population will be useful, and grouping by continent will save me some time later. Adding languages might be interesting as well. Further, if I want to convert some of the data, I can do that automatically, as everyone knows how annoying it is to convert dates from text. I could create a group for the different country blocks, like BRICS. Of course, this is a logical data transformation. It's not changing any of the data source, so that the next time that I bring data in, it will remember those transformations and reapply them. Now that's a quick and simple way of bringing information in, but OAC has visual data flows for more complex data tasks. This data flow is showing the same three files, but running them through a series of steps. I might want to filter out some of the data from the source file or transform some columns. I might want to branch into multiple tables at the end of this transformation. Note the visuals aren't just used to show flow steps. For example, when binning, you're dealing with ranges of numerical values. I can create bins easily just by dragging the sliders. What's most interesting are the more advanced transformations like automated sentiment analysis on text fields or the built-in time series forecasting done in line with the data flow. OAC data flows can also include steps to train ML models, or you could use a trained model as part of the pipeline and have it score your data before saving it into the system, which is super cool. To this point, we've been showing what a self-service user can do. But from an enterprise point of view, Oracle Analytics also has a fully fledged, open, Git-compatible enterprise semantic model. Using this, in parallel, developers can collaboratively work on and deploy an enterprise-level model that includes things like hierarchies, metrics, and it standardizes how you're going to present the information ahead of time. It also allows you to do things like track lineage. Here we've got the physical layer to the database, the data sources, and how the data is joined through the logical layer, and then ultimately how it's presented to the end user. And of course, they can manage the enterprise security too. So that's an overview of how you get data into Oracle Analytics. In the next section, we'll show you how to analyze all of this. Here we are back in the Oracle Analytics homepage. Let's start by asking a simple question in natural language about the data we loaded. I'm curious about poverty rate and inflation or consumer price index, CPI, by country and age group. Note that OAC automatically identified the data set that was most likely to answer my question. It then created a view of relevant metrics. I did not need to know in advance what data set to use. From that view, I'm going to create a dashboard from scratch by selecting the world map first. I'm now in an OAC workbook, and before I continue my analysis, I want to ensure I'm working with the cleanest and most accurate data available. I'll quickly inspect my data set, and I see that this data set has been certified by my admin, which lets me know that this is the best data set to use for my analysis. One of the first things that draws my attention in the workbook is this light bulb icon, which is telling me that the system has generated some automatic insights using a combination of heuristics and ML. 
I can see that OAC has identified clusters of countries, and I'm interested in countries with low inflation, so I'm going to add that to my analysis. Of all the insights offered, these two diverging lines really catch my attention. If you look at the trend of poverty rate by age group, you can see that in the 2010s, people of retirement age started falling into poverty at a disproportionate rate. I can tune what Auto Insights is looking at if I want. I can direct it to which attributes or measures are particularly interesting, or if there's noisy data or columns that are not of interest, I could exclude them. With little effort, I started from a natural language question, made a quick dashboard, and have identified some clusters and identified interesting trends. Of course, all of this is wired together. If I highlight this cluster, it's showing me these are the countries, or vice versa. I can filter and do a wide range of interactions in the visas. But what I'm interested in is trying to identify if this trend is true across the board. What I'd like to do is look at this trend for these clusters of countries. And when I drag the cluster chart into my canvas, OAC automatically creates a calculation so that I can use the clusters as part of the rest of my analysis. So I'm going to drop the clusters onto my trend chart and see if each group is showing a similar pattern. The first thing we see is there's some data sparsity here. So we're going to ignore the top and bottom cluster. Now this is interesting to me. Canada and a lot of European countries show low poverty rate and not much of a gap between retirees and other people. Nowadays, I live in the U.S., and so when I click on the U.S., I can see that the U.S. is part of the cluster that's showing a more divergent poverty trend. These are all rich countries, so it makes me wonder what people are spending their money on in the U.S. I'm going to go ahead and try to get an answer to that question using a simple question. How much money do people spend by category? OAC is now reaching out to Oracle's LLM to answer the question. It responds with a simple column chart showing what people are spending their money on, mainly food, health, and transportation, which isn't surprising. If I then ask, has that changed over the years? I see that no, this is sort of consistent. You can see how we combine natural language chat interaction with visualizations. So I'm going to go ahead now and drag this onto my dashboard and make some space for analysis. Let's see if this is consistent across age groups. Let's maximize that and turn it into a 100% area chart for clarity. So we can see that with age, people are traveling less, so transportation spend is coming down. They spend less money on education, but healthcare is clearly taking a growing share of the spend, which makes a lot of sense. Before I share this, naturally I could reorganize this canvas and make it a little bit prettier. I could easily do that by control shifting and doing some operations like bolding my text, and maybe increasing the font size. And certainly I'd want to use some rounded corners and just give it a little bit more of a flair before we share it out to the broader masses. I've gotten to the point where I'd like to share this finding so I can iterate on it with my coworkers. I can share it as an email or print it, or of course Slack or Teams it, as I'm showing here. In very little time, I would get to something more stylized and cleaner. For interaction, I'd put prompts and maybe add some summary tiles at the top. Not bad, but this is about the limits of my design skills. Somebody with a little bit more of a design flair can make an infographic like this. Note that they never left the tool to make this. This is all native to OAC. So far, I've been doing everything as an author, but let's preview it for what a consumer would see. Here, we've added an animated prompt. And we also see the natural language generated text changes based on the country selected. If you want to share as a presentation with a set of data connected slides, it's no problem. In present mode, you can set the interactivity that you want the consumers to experience. Do you want people to be able to add notes and collaborate or not? Maybe to share their thoughts on what's driving poverty trends. Also, if you don't turn it off, some people will want to use Excel as a front end, which we also support. Now, what happens if your users are on the go? I'm sure you've noticed this QR code. Many people live on their mobile devices. As before, here's my watch list and homepage, and the infographic. As you can see, it's rendered with full fidelity, looking exactly how the author wanted it to look. And of course, I can still interact and use all the filters as expected. For a more native mobile experience, we also have one-handed mode, where responsive design puts content in a stack for ease of use. 
But what about if people are driving or simply want to listen to the story within the data? Well, OAC can automatically generate a podcast with chapters. Welcome to your Oracle Analytics update as of March 12th. Let's start by looking at poverty rate by country. The data shows the poverty rate for a total of 44 countries. Breakdown per country. When taken to... Finally, OAC content can be embedded into a custom application or website easily. Using Visual Builder, our low-code tool, or Oracle Apex, we can turn poverty analysis into action by triggering a fundraiser campaign workflow, for example. In summary, Oracle Analytics offers lots of powerful ways to share our findings about poverty. But what if I want to share these findings about poverty as a story using other techniques beyond what we've already shown? With Oracle Analytics pioneering an open exchange format, it means that we will soon be able to support a huge range of rich outputs. We're going to be publishing the story exchange format to interface with a multitude of generative cloud services, and we've already started working on these. Here, I can export the data story as a storyboard of generated vises and NLG, which I can edit to the context that I want. So let's share the story payload with one of our partners, Synthesia, to generate an analytics newscast delivered by an AI avatar. Welcome to your Oracle Analytics update as of March 12, 2024. Let's start by looking at health expenditure per capita across these 36 countries. On average, the yearly expenditure is $3,866. What stands out is that the US spends far more with the health expenditures of over $10,000 per person. Switzerland, Norway and Germany are the next three in terms of health expenditure, with $6,232 on average. Now why does this matter? Because we need to get people to pay attention to data. Everyone knows that the medium is the message, and getting analytics to hit home requires a wide variety of creative communications. 